Dunn and I'm here today with Mimi Spencer and Sam Rice who have co-authored a book called The Midlife Kitchen um, and we're sitting here in a wonderful um, supermarket and just chatting about what ingredients you should have when you are 40 and over. It's 40 years old. Yeah, it's, it's midlife so we don't specifically give an age category for that but generally speaking in 40s, 50s and beyond. Just tell me a bit about yourself because um, Mimi you were in fashion before. Yeah I was a, a fashion journalist for a long time I worked at the Evening Standard um, and then I became freelance and I was a columnist on You magazine for a very long time which was an absolutely brilliant job um, and then I think I reached midlife in a funny kind of way and, and your relationship with fashion changes um, and I started to realise I wasn't quite as fascinated and excited about the new drop of clothes as I once was um, and I started to write more and more about food, uh, more about nutrition, uh, more about um, women and body shape, those sorts of issues. And as a result of that, I um, wrote a piece for the Times about intermittent fasting. And um, in the process of doing that interview, I met Michael Mosley, and together we wrote The Fast Start, which introduced 5-2. Uh, and that was about four or five years ago now, and it sort of went stratospheric and became my life for a good few years. And as a result of that, my interest in nutrition and diet uh, and, um, and weight really blossomed. Sam, how, how do you two well, know each other? Well, we are school chums, not from school, but our kids went to the same school. And uh, that was about 10 years ago we met. Back in 2012, um, my youngest brother died from type 1 diabetes. And that, for me, was the trigger to really start thinking about my own health. So it's really come from a very personal experience. And at the same time, Mimi was doing the fast diet. So our mutual interest in, in food and health sort of started then. Here we seem to have, a, you know, it seems to be something that's difficult to do somehow. People are like, oh, well, you know, I want to be healthy, but it's so hard. Mm. And actually, you go somewhere like Bali and you realise it's actually very easy. And so that's where we've got our inspiration around looking at ingredients. Rather than thinking about, you know, what am, what am I going to make for dinner? You think, well, what ingredients are going to be good and how can I make something out of those? And, and that, you work with a nu nutritionist on the board. Yeah, it was really important to us. Um, given that we are regular midlifers, we have a great interest in food and nutrition and it, we've done a lot of research. We have a background in that, but we needed to uh, recognise that we, we needed good, nutritional, solid, sensible um, knowledge in the book. And so we went to Dr. Sarah Schenker, who worked with me on the fast diet and my fast diet recipe book. Um, and she gave everything her seal of approval and, yeah. and made sure that everything that we said made nutritional sense. There's mm. nothing outlandish, there's nothing that's going to scare the cat. It's sort of going back really to, to sort of simple truth about food as opposed to you know, trying to take the latest study and spin it. We're actually almost kind of going away from that and saying, what do we really know? Where is where is a weight of evidence to show that, for example, flax seeds are phytoestrogenic and they help balance your hormones? Yes, you know, there's enough evidence to say that we can we can be quite clear on that. But what we're not going to do is take you know, a very obscure ingredient and say it's going to make you live to be 103. That's definitely not That's the, not not the So the kind of ingredients you find in the book are things that are very familiar, yeah. available in Waitrose, you know, or any supermarket. So things like extra virgin olive oil, yeah. things like almonds, very lemon. familiar things. There, there's really nothing that is going to make people think I'm going to have to invest in a whole new lard of ingredients which I'm going to use once. One of the, the keys to the book is that everything we've got in there has to be simple. Tell me about the sort of like the changes you you need to, you need to be making in terms of nutrition. What do you need more? Of? Well, you, you basically need to get more um, nutrition from less calories in the sense your metabolism does slow down. So you need nutrient-dense foods. What we do in the book is we focus on eight health categories that are important, we feel, in midlife. So things like hormone harmony, um, blood sugar balance, bones and joints, all things that can become health issues as you get older. And we've looked at ingredients that are good for that. Great. Well, I've got a um, basket that I filled. And oh, I just right. wondered if you could maybe have a look at it and tell me if, what other things I might need to consider. And, mm -hmm. um, so here's my shopping basket. Okay. Pretty good, actually. Um, okay, we might as well just start with these. The dates are absolutely brilliant because um, 
we all still want a little bit of sweetness um, from time to time, but we also all know that we can't really do sugar anymore, refined sugar, I mean. So, so we use dates in place of sugar uh, a lot of the time. And what we do with these is, um, if you just whiz them up in a blender with some lemon juice and a little bit of water, it makes um, a raw date syrup. And you can yeah. keep it in the fridge and you can just use it to stir in your porridge, you can put it on pancakes, you can use it to bake with. Um, Dates are fabulous. They are actually, really aren't amazing. They? And they are really sweet. Yeah. Um, but they've got a lower GI, so yeah. they're not going to spike your blood sugars in the way as yeah. most of the refined sugars we would usually use. Yeah. So I've got the humble lemon here. Um, everyone's got lemons in their fridge. They are really a glorious thing to have around. We use them as a third seasoning in the midlife kitchen, so salt, pepper. Um, but lemon sharpens up a dish, brings mm. it into focus, adds a kind of new layer mm. to so many dishes in, in our book. Your palate changes when you, you get to a certain age and you're seeking out more savoury things, you're seeking out more texture, you draw away a little bit from stodge and sugar. We mm. found this very yeah. much. There's really good reasons for having them around and mm. eating a lot of them. They're full of vitamin C, we all know that. That enhances your immunity, it boosts your skin. They also aid iron absorption. So if you're having yeah. um, leafy greens and you want to in up the ante on the iron, Put lemon in your dressing. So yeah, lemon's a brilliant one. So it's going pretty well on the shop at Market so far. Good, good, good. Pretty, good. pretty good. Um, okay, star anise. This is an absolute star ingredient for us, not least because it's our emblem of our book. They're um, so pretty. So, so they have the eight seeds and each Gorgeous. each seed is given a different colour in our book. So we have hormone harmony or B1 colour and bone and joint health. So you can see... Heart, on, um, blood sugar management. Energy Bones, boosting, energy boosting, skin senses and immunity. So, sorry, do go on. I um, <laughs> and so you can see for each recipe what it's particularly good for. So if it's got great ingredients for boosting mind, mood, and memory, it will be awarded that seed. I think if you read the book, you'll see it's super positive. It's not. There's nothing in there that says, "Oh, blimey, no, we're Poor getting on a bit." And we actually know, say in terms ourselves. we are definitively and emphatically pro-aging, not anti. And that's kind of, that can be yeah. seen as a sort of slightly shocking thing because we're meant to sort of become greyer and become shadows of our former self and step back and hand over to the next generation. We're not prepared to do yeah. that. Yeah. You know, we we have. It's not just that we've got lots to give. Yeah. You know, that's really patronising. Yeah, the fact absolutely. is That language. We are who we are. Yeah. Yeah. We've got energy. We've is, got is the whole language that's been used around middle age previously is really patronising. It's a yeah. bit like, you know, you're sort of... Go, girl, you can yeah, still... You've yeah. you still yeah. got worth in this world. Yeah, and it's, you know, it, it is something pastel. Yeah. yeah, <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Why don't you wear something navy? Um, it's, but I, I think, I you know, navy. My, my generation of women, and probably men, inside we still feel 21, 22, yeah. you know, and we still hang out we with still, We still hang the out same with things. Yeah. And so we, you know, this idea of we suddenly have to hand in our chips <laughs> yeah. and, and get comfortable. I don't want but to be comfortable. To, yeah. It used to be yeah. in the articles as well, it would always be like anti-aging, how to stay young, how to, like this thing about, you know, just having to push back the tide of yeah. time yeah. with every ounce of your energy. And actually we were saying that's, that's a ridiculous struggle. Absolutely. You There's know. nothing in our book about reversing the ageing process. There's nothing about getting younger, looking younger, staying younger not a job we don't want to stay younger we want to stay healthy and you can be healthy at any age mm. you know we, absolutely people doing the marathon the, the 50 plus age group at the marathon um, ran fast a faster time on average than the cohort below really? them. just as well I wasn't running yeah more, pe <laughs> more people I would yeah, exactly. average down <laughs> considerably <laughs> more people in their 50s are setting up small businesses in the UK yeah. Than any other age group, mm. um, so there's no, there's nothing patronising about it. There's nothing mm. poor you about it. I say bring it on. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Ban the word middle age. Yeah. Well, I don't even mind if they if, call it what you want. The fact is. We're here, we're strong, we're energetic. And, and we're eating a lot of flax seeds. We're eating a lot of flax seeds. <laughs> <laughs> so is there anything in this basket that needs to be improved or you could, I, I could improve on? Well, I think you've done a really good job. I mean, there's lots of midlife goodies in there. But yeah, there might be a few sort of swap-ins and upgrades we can do. So we can go and have a look. Let's go and yeah. have a look.
So, what have you got in your basket? Let's have a look. We've got some cider vinegar. We all use it in our dressings every day, but you can do a little bit of an upgrade on this and make it a bit more midlife, a bit more healthful. And I would swap it for this. So, okay, what's this is raw, happens to be organic, unrefined cider vinegar. Now, raw. you'll notice that it's cloudy. There's a sort of cloudy ball, and that is prebiotic enzymes. And what you're getting from that is friendly bacteria, which are really, really good for your gut. Ooh. So we know that um, apple cider vinegar can blunt a sugar spike after a meal. Studies have shown this. So it's got an anti-diabetic effect. So it's quite a good one to use in your vinaigrettes. In addition to that, you're getting this prebiotic goodness. So, berries. Right, yes. I can see you've got some fresh strawberries here, yes. which are really delicious and yummy, and nothing wrong with that. But one of our top midlife tips is actually to go for frozen berries. There's such a good selection now in supermarkets, yeah. and they are actually a lot cheaper. It's much better value to get the frozen berries, and you can keep them in the freezer, and you've always got them. Here we've got a berry mix heat that up in the microwave and make a really quick berry sauce to go with yogurt for example or you can just go for the blueberries which are fantastic because the dark berries they have more anthocyanins which are the, the kind of the things that we're after so the blackberries the black currants the blueberries and if you get them frozen this is an interesting fact that because they're picked and frozen when they're really bright, they actually have more vitamin C than the fresh varieties. So from a health point of view, they're even better. Um, so so yeah, some in, what, there's some in there as well. As and we'll go and put that back. Oh, okay. Well, unless you want to have them as well, why not? Okay. You were talking about uh, flaxseed um, yeah. earlier, and I've just been looking on here and I can't find it. That's so because flaxseed has another name. Oh, uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And there are lots of different types as well. So flaxseed is just the same as linseed. So mm. if you look around here, there you go, there's golden linseed. Oh, yeah. And there they are. Now these are clever little dudes. Um, they are full of phytoestrogens. So they're really good for easing menopausal symptoms. Mm -hmm. um, they're and fibre, absolutely packed with fibre as well, which yeah. obviously is good for digestive re health. Releasing the um, nutrients from within is quite difficult because obviously they've got a tough shell. Mm. So we use a lot of these in a ground formulation. We put it with ground almonds and ground sunflower seeds. We put them into our seed mix as well. So our seed mix has got some of these glories up here in it. Sunflower seeds, pumpkin, sesame. If you, if you're having these sorts of seeds on a regular basis just chuck them over soups they yeah. look really really pretty put them in a sandwich and they're great for energy wrap. as well i mean if you think what a seed is it's sort of you know the nub of life of the next mm. generation of plants so they're, they're actually got all that potential energy in there and if you're eating them you know you're gonna you're gonna be full of beans they fill are you up. a really good part Better of a balanced diet a Mars bar. yeah yeah exactly so this is my chocolate of choice okay um, tell me, do I need to improve on this? Well, let's have a look. It's milk chocolate, 37% cocoa. Um, you could probably make a little bit of an upgrade, a little bit of a midlife upgrade. Yeah, um, probably what would we suggest? I think really want to be looking for a minimum 70% uh, cocoa solids on your okay. chocolate. Something like this. Yeah. So if you, like the, if you like this one, then you can see here this one is 70%. You can go up as well. There's 80 5%. I mean, you can Starts go. becoming really dense and once, bitter. Once, I have to have a real chocolate Once tooth you get up yeah. to 90, 99%, obviously the antioxidant content is going up all the time, so from a health point of view, but the taste element, for me anyway, is going down. This so, is where you can sort of settle. Yeah. And a study has shown actually that you crave less chocolate if you eat the dark stuff than if you eat the milk. So, calorie wise, you're better off sticking to this because you'll, you'll probably have fewer chunks of it. So, Fennel is on your list, your yeah. midlife magic yeah, list. Yeah, it what, is. What, what is it? What, I know, um, a lot of people get a bit spooked by yes. fennel because it's a bulb and what do you do with a bulb? I'll just tell you a little bit about why we like fennel. First of all, the taste. That's the most important thing. It's got this beautiful grown up and the seedy taste. It's got loads of phytonutrients in there. It's got a compound called anatol, which um, has lots of health giving properties. And so if you don't use fennel at the moment, give it a go. Fennel is your friend. Fennel's my friend. It is. Okay, so you. pop that in and give that a go tonight. 
So I've got cabbage. So you have. Tell me about cabbage. Okay, so cabbage is great. You know, it's uh, full of fibre and it's pretty good for you. And we eat it a lot, don't we, in coleslaw and in salads and that kind of thing. But you could probably upgrade your cabbage. You could go for okay. midlife cabbage. Right. Uh, and the way to do that is to swap up one of these. If I can get it. Wow, quite red a cabbage. This is an enormous red cabbage. <laughs> this will last you for about six weeks. Um, so why, why swap up? Let's look at it. Crisp, good, colourful, red. What you're looking for in all of your vegetables, your fresh vegetables on your midlife plate, is to go for as much brilliance and colour as possible. The darker the colour, the more anthocyanins a veg or a fruit will have. And those are the things that are heart protective, they're antioxidant, and they've got the kind of extra goodies. So the difference between this and this would be the same as the difference between a white onion and a red onion, or a white chicory and a red chicory. And if you're making a choice with your vegetables, it's not about taste. Sometimes it's a bit about prettiness, because these kind of look yeah. nicer. Um, but there are added phytonutrients in a, a darker, redder uh, vegetable than there would be in the, the white alternative. So this is the one for your basket.